I get a lot of questions about how to practice zilling, right? It's one thing to sort of know the patterns and to have heard the patterns, but just to drill your zilling is sometimes kind of a challenging thing if you don't have a, a programmed idea of how to work it. So there's so many different ways to practice your zills and they're all fantastic, except I say sitting down. Unless you're gonna play with a band, don't sit down and play your zills. <laughs> if you're gonna be dancing with it, it's good to always be dancing or moving the arms and trying to sort of incorporate the body movement with the zilling. Today I'm gonna to take you through a basic zill drill that will help you gain uh, speed and gain accuracy. The biggest issue I see with new zillers is getting things up to speed, because of course that's a challenge, and also to keep the beat very steady, which is usually an issue of like right hand, left hand, one being faster and stronger than the other. So getting the beat to be steady, getting things up to speed, and then of course dancing with them, right? Which is a whole other thing. Dancing with them is a challenge in and of itself. That's the biggest challenge. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take whatever your basic stroke is, my basic stroke is, um, is sort of like a, a clack into a ring. So I bring my zills down on each other, not quite flush, and then open to pull the sound out. I'm just gonna use my basic, my basic today for this drill. We are gonna be working quarter notes, eighth notes, 16th notes, and the gallop or the arraj, or sometimes called the triplet, but it's not a triplet. So your quarter notes are your one, two, three, four. Your eighth notes are one and two and three and four and. Your sixteenth notes are one e and a, two e and a, three e and a, four e and a. And your gallop is the and a one and a two and a three and a four, which is basically just sixteenth notes, but you've removed one from every grouping of four. If you would like more information about how to count zills, and if none of that made any sense to you, I actually have a video all about counting zills where I'll lay it out a little bit more simply so feel free to check that out. So we're going to be using the basic stroke. We are going to play one, two, three, four quarter notes. Then moving to eighths, one and two and three and four and moving to sixteenth notes, one e and a two e and a three e and a four e and a immediately into gallops and a one, and a two, and a three, and a four. So that last bit of 16th notes will run right into your gallop, so it'll sound like one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one, and a two, and a three, and a four. And then we'll repeat. I am going to put on the metronome. I know, the metronome. If you do not have a metronome, get a metronome. You can buy an old school metronome where you actually plug it into the wall, but like any smartphone will have an app for a metronome, I uh, have one on my iPhone that we are going to use today. This is how I keep myself honest. And what I like, I have pro metronome. I think I have the free version. What I like about this is not only will it click and make noise for me, this is the one that I thought was the least annoying because it sounded a little bit like a zill, but it also has these cute little lights that go, which allows me to be able to hear it or to use it when I can't hear it, right? Because sometimes my zills are just too loud and if I don't plug this in to an amplifier, I can use the lights to make sure that I'm on time. We're gonna start at 90 beats per minute, which is a moderato, it's kind of a nice medium tempo. Uh, and we'll ramp it up a little bit today uh, as we practice, yeah? So starting at 90 beats per minute. And we'll just start here in our basic dance posture. We're going one, two, three, four. One and two and three and four and one and a three and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four again. One, two, three, four. One and two and three and four and one and a three and a three and a four and a one and a two. One more time, just like that. One, two, three, four. One and two and three and four. playing these patterns, I'm continuously alternating, except for the gallop, which I do right, left, right, right, left, right, right, left, right, right, left, right. I think the, con the continuously alternating is probably the best way to play everything up to the gallop. And then when you do the gallop, whether you restart every gallop on your right or continuously alternate is fine by me. Just be sure you're cognizant of what you're doing and that you're choosing one or the other. Uh, that's the way I've learned it is right hand lead for the arra for the gallop, but you can continuously alternate, which would be right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. 
that's totally an option as well. I'm going to turn to face the mirror. We're going to do it again. Same tempo, 90 beats per minute, but we're going to start to incorporate some hand movement and some body movement. Yeah? Six, seven, eight.